session 10. Um, Nate Lamy was uh, scheduled to present this talk, but he is otherwise occupied. Um, so Dr. Kamal Asaba is going to be making his presentation. Um, um, and I'm just going to read you a little bit about him. Um, so Kamal is a civil engineer and fire protection engineer. Um, he has hands-on experience with large-scale experimentation, fire, and combustion. Um, Kamal joined, and I'm going to spell this out for you, um, the Cold Regions Research and Engineering Laboratory. We, um, the acronym is CREL. Uh, he joined the CREL in 2017 and that is now part of their oil and environment group. He leads a Department of Interior project related to in-situ burning of oil spills in offshore environments and works with Bessie uh, and the US Coast Guard on topics related to fire and combustion. So Kamal, I see you. Share your presentation. Sure, definitely. There you are. Can you see it? Not yet. There we are. Um, okay. In presentation, there you go. You're good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank, thank you for the introduction. So, hello, everybody. Uh, so, uh, as Alan mentioned, my name is Kemal Arsava, and I'm currently working as a research engineer uh, in the Cold Regions Environment and Research Laboratory. And today I'm going to cover for Nathan Lamy, and uh, I will talk about our study, which is the innovative fire boom configuration and air injection system to optimize industry burning efficiency. So this study was sponsored by uh, Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, and it was a collaborative study with uh, SROs, Environmental Research and Environmental Protection Agency, and Corel and uh, Bessie. So let's start. So today I'm going to uh, talk about our project our overview, uh, talk a bit about our goals, and then I will uh, briefly talk about the uh, laboratory uh, scale tests performed at SROs environmental uh, research. Then I will talk about the uh, large scale tests at Karel. I will uh, briefly talk about the uh, fiber configuration air injection system, and then I will uh, present the data and then uh, finish the presentation with a small discussion. So as a uh, project overview, uh, as I, oh, sorry. Uh, so as I mentioned, our main objective is to increase the burn efficiency, burn efficiency and combustion efficiency. And uh, uh, in, this con in that context, we had two uh, approaches. The first one is changing the boom geometry. Uh, so on the right hand side, uh, you can see the tested boom configurations. And uh, the first one is the, the one to one aspect ratio. Basically we had a 50 foot, 50 foot section of Desmi uh, pyro boom and we uh, shape it as a, a square two, two meter by two meter and perform several tests in there. Then we switch to a four to one aspect ratio by keeping the surface area same uh, around 3.5 meters square and the last expect the last uh, aspect ratio that we had tried was the nine to one again by keeping the surface area constant so the as you can see basically we uh, changed the square pool fire uh, burn into a line fire uh, by like one to one to nine nine to one so this line fire uh, helps us to naturally uh, direct the air into the combustion zone, increase the flame temperature, and uh, reduce the soot yield. And the second approach we tested was the injection of air to further increase the uh, combustion efficiency. So the air injection helped us to better mix the uh, fuel and air and helped us to further reduce the soot yield, which I will show you at the end. So as a first step, uh, lab scale test performed at SROs facility. Uh, this is to demonstrate the proof of concept of the, uh, the boom geometry and the air injection. Then after the uh, successful study uh, at Karel, we designed and assembled a prototype and deployed it in our wave tank and demonstrated the performance of this uh, prototype. And, uh, and during tests, uh, we collected some uh, oil, oil samples, uh, air, air samples uh, by the help of EPA. 
and we also measured the burn efficiency by using the uh, like uh, by using the mess in mess out technique. So first, I will give a very brief uh, talk about the SROs facility and their uh, performance study. So they have a f in their facility, they have a wave tank, which is 11 meter long, uh, 1.2 meter wide and 0 0.85 uh, meter deep. And in their facility, they tested three aspect ratios, uh, one to one point one, <coughs> sorry, 1.5 to one, uh, three to one and six to one. And they used uh, two to three SCFM uh, as an air injection. And in their test metrics, they changed the wave conditions, air flow rate, air injection angle, and uh, the boom aspect ratio, and performed 33 uh, lab scale burns. And the results of this uh, lab scale burns were used uh, for the large scale test at Karel. So before uh, talking about the the Karel, uh, the Karel tests and the data, I would like to uh, briefly introduce our wave tank. Uh, which we are proud of. And uh, so our wave tank was uh, initially owned by Alaska Clean Seas and uh, SROs. It's a 14.3 meter long uh, uh, wave tank. It is a width of 2.4 meter and 1.8 meter deep. And in 2013, it moved to Karel. And uh, since then, uh, we have been refurbishing it. So by means of refurbishing, we put a new uh, wave actuator and the wave and generation system. We added new wave absorbers uh, and we added uh, new uh, observ observ observation windows, uh, paint and a deluge system uh, to keep the walls of the tank cold uh, during the ISP. And uh, in here, you can see our boom configurations. On the top left, uh, you can see the two meter by two meter uh, burn area. Uh, we are uh, pouring the oil slowly for each test. Uh, we put around one centimeter thick oil slick, which is around 35 liters or, or around uh, 10 gallons. And at the center, you can see the four to one ratio, aspect ratio. And on the right one, you can see the nine to one aspect ratio. So the boom uh, hold uh, by the chains, as you can hear, as you can see in here. So the chains uh, help us to uh, keep the shape while allowing the boom move with the waves. And for the air injection, so based on SROs uh, lab scale uh, tests. Uh, we designed uh, this air injection system. So basically the thing that we added is uh, pipes, uh, which are three to eight inch steel pipes, and they are connected to a, a air compressor. And for each test, uh, we had uh, 12 air injection nozzles uh, in the looking to the uh, flame. And uh, the other parameter that we have changed is the, the angle of the nozzles. For example, in this picture, you see the 90 degree angle. It's directly looking to the flame. Then we tested 45 degree nozzles, which looks up to the flame with a 45 degree. And then we had one test uh, with a 100, 135 degree, uh, which is like 45 uh, degree looking down uh, to the uh, pool surface. And uh, EPA was there, as I mentioned. So uh, they helped us to collect the, collect the uh, PM 2.5 data, CO, CO2, uh, volatiles, uh, pH, PAH uh, data. Also, they uh, analyzed uh, post burn residues chemically for us. And uh, for the residue sample collection, uh, we used the conventional mess out, mess in uh, method. So we measured the, how much oil we put into the uh, burn area, then we measured the amount of residue and basically subtracted it from the initial mass. And as I mentioned, uh, we used around uh, 35 liters of Alaska North Slope crude oil, and each burn took around uh, four minutes. So in addition to uh, air sampling, uh, mass sampling, uh, we also had uh, lots of visual uh, recording. 
we had GoPros uh, strate strategically placed uh, around the tank. So on the right hand side, you can see the overview of our way tank. You can see the, block, uh, the black smoke coming out. And we also use the virtual Ringelmann app uh, to, uh, to predict the, the color of the smoke and the combustion efficiency. So this is our test matrix. Uh, so we have performed 16 tests. And so as a parameter, we played with the waves. We have no waves and with wave cases. And for the waves, we used uh, 15 centimeter high uh, with a 1.5 second period waves. And for the airflow, we have no airflow case and we have different uh, air, 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 air rates. And for the nozzle, again, uh, we tried different angles. And the main uh, parameter that we focused on was the boom aspect ratio. Again, it was one to one, uh, nine to one, and four to one. So now I'm going to uh, talk about the results. So I know this is a very a busy table, uh, but I will uh, go slowly and try to explain it one by one. So hopefully it will be easy for you. So in here, uh, you can see our first two tests. And, uh, and on the top uh, row, you can see the parameters. For example, it starts with the uh, wave conditions. For these two tests, we have no waves. Uh, the only parameter that uh, is different between these two runs are the air flow. So in the first test, we have no air flow, one-to-one -one ratio. And the second test, uh, we supplied air uh, into this system. And the parameters that I'm going to talk are the ones on the top right, the, the three columns, the, the, the PM 2.5, emissions, the average burn rate, and the burn efficiency. So if you look at this table, the thing that we have seen is for the one-to-one -one ratio, uh, when we do the control burn, which is no air injection, uh, our burn rate is around uh, 94 uh, percent. Sorry, our, our burn efficiency is around 94 percent. But with the introduction of air, it increased 1.3 percent, which gets closer to 96 percent oil removal efficiency. So then we performed the, uh, the third and the fourth test. So now we are adding the wave parameters. So with the waves, now I am focusing on the center chart and the, the right chart. So for the center chart, it shows the how does it change, how the control change uh, with the waves. So as you remember, for the control, we were around 94%. And when we introduced the waves, uh, we had a reduction in burn efficiency. So it drops to 91%. And then when we have the waves and then introduce the air, we see a 4.4% uh, increase in the burn efficiency. So basically, this tells us that uh, air injection uh, has a nice role uh, in terms of reducing the PM 2.5 emission. So if you check the, uh, the, the emission factors, you can see that <clears throat> with the air, uh, we have much less, much less uh, suit. For example, if you compare the, the first and the second uh, tests in terms of uh, PM 2.5, so the baseline was one, around 163. Then with the air injection, as expected, it drops to 130, while we have an increase in the burn efficiency. So the fifth test that we have performed, uh, we performed it again with the one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Then we have the waves, the same uh, air flow rate, but this time we just changed the the nozzle angle. So it was 90 degree for the uh, first four tests, but for the uh, fifth test, it was 45 degree looking up uh, to the flame. So the thing that we have seen is the 45 angle uh, improved the uh, burn efficiency a bit further. Now it's 95% and then uh, further reduced to uh, suit. So the, we decided to continue with the uh, 45 uh, degree angle and performed our nine to one uh, tests. So 
Now uh, we can see all the uh, tests of the one to one and the nine to one aspect ratio. And let's start with the chart on the left hand side. So when you see the, when you compare the controls, no waves, uh, no air injection, and when you compare the one to one to nine to one, you can see a significant increase in the burn efficiency. So for the one to one, it's around 94%, and for nine to one, it's around 99%. There's a, so nine to one has a significant increase uh, when the everything is stagnant. And the, when now I'm talking about the center uh, chart and with the introduction of the waves, uh, we have a uh, big decrease in the burn efficiency. So it was 99%, now it's around 95%. So the reason of this decrease might be the and the disturbance of the fuel surface due to geometry. So in the one-to-one -one, uh, aspect ratio, we have two meters by two meters. And with this, uh, with the uh, wave period, with the, with the wave profile, we have around four, uh, high, uh, like the, uh, what's the terminology? Four high, four, like basically the wave profile, you have top four peaks and four, uh, bottom parts. So it disturbs less, but when you have a uh, nine to one ratio, it's longer, so it's subject to more waves. So you have like around uh, 12 uh, top and 12 bottom. So it's basically the waves disturbing it more. So the, the decrease uh, in this uh, burn efficiency due to waves into nine to one might be the, uh, the may, may, uh, might be the uh, effect of uh, fuel surface disruption due to waves. And then I'm now talking about the uh, right chart, which is the, which shows you the waves and air and waves. So basically when we add the wave, when we have waves, it was decreased, but when we add the air into the waves, it decreased furthermore. The, the, this basically shows that, uh, shows us that uh, with the nine to one ratio, with the addition of air, probably we are cooling uh, the air down. And so due to that, uh, we have less burn efficiency. And uh, for the four to one ratio, uh, I put the, I didn't uh, put them in the table, but in here you can see it in the charts. So if you focus on the left chart and uh, check the controls, so four to one is basically at the center of the one to one and the nine to one ratios. Uh, it's the, the, the control uh, burn efficiency is, uh, is around 97% and with the air, there's a slight decrease. And uh, with the waves, again, there's a significant uh, decrease. It's around, it decreased around 8%. And on the right chart, uh, with the addition of air, we see a slight increase in the burn efficiency for the four to one ratio. So as a summary uh, for the burn efficiency, so in all, in all our tests, uh, we had a high oil removal efficiency, they are more than 88%. And for the nine to one aspect ratio with no waves, uh, with no air injection, we had the uh, best uh, burn efficiency. So, and uh, our, lows, our lowest burn efficiency was around 88.8 uh, when uh, we had the four to one uh, aspect ratio with waves. And when we had the nozzles uh, pointing down to the fuel surface. Uh, so the reason is when we injected air to the fuel surface, it disturbed the fuel surface. And even though the burn rate was very fast uh, with that nozzle orientation, uh, we had a, a very uh, low burn efficiency. So for the burn rate, uh, for all the tests, we have 2.2 uh, millimeters per minute, which aligns with the uh, boost uh, predictions. And uh, so as I said, uh, our highest burn rate uh, was when we directed the air nozzle through the <clears throat> sorry, to the uh, fuel surface. So it gave us a very high burn rate, but with a, a low uh, burn efficiency. <clears throat> sorry for that. So this is the uh, particulate matter uh, versus the mass loss 
uh, data provided by the EPA. And uh, the x-axis shows the oil mass loss in percentage. And the, the y-axis shows the, the particulate matter uh, per produced particulate matter per uh, oil of kilogram of oil consumed. And uh, I, I believe Kevin Stone explained it very well. So the, the outcome of this chart is the nine to one uh, ratio has the lowest uh, PM 2.5 emission factor and has the, and has the highest combustion, combustion efficiency. Uh, but in terms of oil consumption, uh, it is not the uh, greatest. As she mentioned, the combustion efficiency and the burn efficiency, uh, they are different things. So as a summary, and our combustion efficiency increases with the aspect ratio uh, per EPA's data. Our, uh, for calm conditions uh, with the aspect ratio, uh, we also uh, see an increase in the burn efficiency. And uh, for this uh, set of tests, burn efficiency and burn rate are inversely correlated. And uh, for the air injection, we haven't seen a significant uh, effect in terms of uh, burn efficiency, but in terms of uh, the particle matter, there's a significant, significant reduction. So for future work, uh, we will talk with the boom manufacturers uh, to implement this uh, design, the, the higher, the longer uh, boom geometry uh, for, their, for their system. And in future, uh, we are also considering testing various air injection methods, such as uh, changing the location of the nozzles uh, using different nozzle types and other uh, air-related parameters. So as an acknowledgement, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Bureau of Safety and Environment Enforcement is the sponsor of this project. And I would like to thank uh, to their support and also thank our uh, thank EPA SROs uh, for their contributions. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Kamal. Um, I mean, just looking at, even at your lower burn, lowest burn efficiency is at you know, 89, nearly 89%. I mean, that still looks pretty good to me, but I mean, I'm yep. really glad you're looking at how to make it even more efficient. So I think it's really exciting work. Um, do we have any questions, Lindsay, for Kamal? No open questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you very much. Wait, there's one thing that just came in. Oh, wait, wait. From Kurt Hansen, Olmstead used air injected uh, from underwater. Any idea if this would help? Uh, I think I read that paper or a different paper related with uh, air injection underwater. The thing that they observed is, uh, the, again, the when the air bubbles pop on the surface, it just distracts the uh, the oil flame interface and cause a cool down in the flame temperature and it reduced the burn rate. But again, I, I haven't, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I didn't read anything related with the combustion efficiency. So the only thing that I remember, it caused the reduction in the burn efficiency. All right, that it? Yes, it is. Okay.